time period in Ethereum. And I would also uh, like to send credit to Thomas Puja, who is the coordinator of the full funding in the pilot project, but uh, was not able to attend Wikimania and to join us in this presentation. So, uh, at the very beginning, I would like uh, uh, to make a brief outline of uh, the main topics that are included in this presentation. First, I'm going to start with the definition of flow funding as a new funding model, which is uh, driven by the community. And uh, unlike the grant paying process by the Wikimedia Foundation, it has uh, some different characteristics that uh, sets it apart from the FDC or GEC or uh, the IEG. Uh, then I'll uh, hand it over to Andrew, who will continue with the historical uh, background of the flow funding in the pilot year. And he is going to explain as well one of the projects that were funded during this, year, during, during this period. And at the end, uh, there are the future perspectives uh, that should be followed in order to make the flow funding uh, traditional uh, initiative that will be carried on in the future as well. Okay, so, so the flow funding uh, is uh, a community driven initiative that aims to entrust the communities across uh, the world uh, to have the power to distribute money to the projects that uh, they have identified uh, in uh, their vicinity. So, in the pilot year, there were 10 uh, flow funders. Uh, denoted with the red dots on the next rows. So, as you can see, uh, there are, uh, there are co co funders uh, in almost every continent except Australia. But we hope in the future we'll have uh, any of them there. And the green dot uh, and the green dot represents uh, the residence of the coordinator, of Thomas Souza, uh, who coordinated all these flow funders during the year. So. Uh, the traditional process of flow funding actually consists of five steps that uh, should be a lot walked through. The first one is the identification of projects, which has to be done by the uh, flow funder. So this phase includes all the contacts with the persons uh, that uh, are interested in uh, carrying out some projects, uh, uh, the communication between them, uh, uh, the description of the project and the first thought about its feasibility. Uh, the second step that follows the first one is the recommendation of the project. Uh, this is the phase in which uh, the flow funder actually uh, fulfills uh, an application form which is uh, available on Meta about the project, in which he, he explains uh, uh, what is the alignment of the project uh, with the mission and the goals of the uh, what is the budget for the project and uh, what are the goals of the project. Afterwards, uh, there is a time for discussion on the discussion page of the project, whether the uh, application is uh, worth supporting or not. So everybody uh, is uh, everybody can uh, participate in the discussion to post uh, comments, uh, questions or concerns, which may uh, influence the, uh, the decision that should be made uh, by the flow funding with, uh, by the flow funder with support from the foundation. And the next step is actually the implementation of the project, which actually is carried out by the party that received the money from the flow funder. And after the conclusion of the project, uh, there is the phase of reporting. So uh, the party that uh, executed the project uh, has to prepare a report which will detail all the activities that uh, were uh, executed during the implementation of the project, uh, all the goals that were reached, the measures of success, of success that uh, were complied, and uh, all the lessons that were, that were run, uh, learned uh, from the project. So, the next thing are the things that uh, are actually the basic uh, features of the flow function and the things that uh, set it apart from the other uh, funding sources uh, run by the Wikimedia Foundation. Oh, uh, I thought that uh, an easy way to, uh, outla uh, to uh, underline the most important things 
that are rated uh, about the flow funding is actually to make a comparison with the other uh, the uh, similarities uh, with the other uh, funding sources uh, around the foundation. So I think it's not visible here. But the first column is about the characteristics of the flow funding. The second one is about the uh, drug maintenance process around the foundation. The third one is about the IPC process and the fourth one. And the last is about the IEG, the individual determination grant. So in this table, it is visible that the flow funding uh, uh, the decision making of flow funding is shorter than in the others, so it's uh, less than 30 days. Another specific uh, thing is that uh, anyone at any time can uh, send an application, uh, can uh, come up with a project and uh, ask for a recommendation for this project. Uh, the other characteristic is that uh, through the flow funding, only projects from uh, $500 to $2,000 can be funded. Uh, the money, uh, the money, uh, uh, of course, uh, comes from the foundation. So the money are from the foundation, but uh, uh, people from the community actually decide whether this money will be distributed or not. And at the end, uh, uh, the person who uh, does most about uh, whether a project will be funded or not, actually, who make the decision, is the flow founder. And all the advice who is given to him actually comes from the community. Unlike the other uh, funding sources, where there are separate communities that support and advise the work of the Wikimedia Foundation to make the decision whether to fund the project or not. So each of the flow funders can allocate from 500 to 2,000 dollars, as it was uh, mentioned in the table. And if uh, there are projects that are funded with less than $2,000, there is a possibility for each flow funder to fund more than one project. So it is not uh, restricted to only one project uh, with uh, this in this range. So we can separate it in, for example, four projects by 500 or two by, uh, or two by uh, 1,000. So uh, it also uh, the, the most important way is to distribute the total amount of the money available. So in terms of a history and brief, and brief summary. Okay, so the idea of flow funding was first, first mentioned back in uh, May of 2012. Um, there was a budget approved of $20,000 in October of the same year. And the, uh, the pilot got started um, in November. So, and it, it technically um, has just ended um, in, in the last month. So I'm going to talk to you um, a little bit about what was achieved during that period, and principally uh, about the four projects that were actually funded um, for a total amount of about $6,600. So the first project, and perhaps the most successful, um, was um, a program done in Germany. And um, about five photographers were taken up in a hot air balloon to take pictures of the city of Hamburg. And so I think this cost out at about, um, I have here my notes, 950 euros. Um, the foundation paid for this. And it was somebody in the German community who knew about the flow funding project who independently submitted this idea and got it approved. Um, so as I said, about five persons went up in the hot air balloon. Uh, they took about 1,200 pictures, and about 500 of those made their way onto the uh, comms. And here's some of those pictures. Um, so talk about the other projects. Um, so about 1,900 euros were spent on a conference regarding the Middle Ages, uh, which was held in Italy. And so the contribution there was um, essentially Wikimedia or Wiki, Wikipedia, Wiki, the Wikimedia Foundation branded some advertisement that was um, distributed to these folks. And I believe we worked towards open sourcing the proceedings of their Middle Ages conference and a lot of medieval music um, in those directions. Um, a third project uh, in the amount of 1,500 US dollars 
uh, went to a cyclist in Brazil. And this individual uh, is riding his bike across Brazil and taking pictures of everything and uploading these pictures to Commons. And um, he also has the responsibility of, I guess, um, kind of spreading uh, the, the, the initiative of taking pictures. And so as he meets people in, in these travels, he's distributing some literature about Wikipedia and, and the uh, Wiki movement. And the fourth and final project um, was on the order of about 1,400 euros. And this was at a university in Macedonia where they paid a guest speaker to come in and had a um, day of events and lectures to the faculty there. And uh, basically this, this revolved around the idea of better integration of wikis into the curriculum and how these professors could um, use that information.
where the Marines would have this giant centralized portal where if you need money, you come here and then you find an individual flow funder who matches your interest. And we went a much more decentralized route in the fact that we let everyone pursue their own way of finding funding. So on English Wikipedia, I set up this thing on my talk page that said, here, you can submit your ideas here to me. I advertised it, I think, on Wiki Research L and the Technical Pump, Village Pump of English Wikipedia, because those are kind of the places I, I hang out. And I got about two or three ideas, I think, over the course of that. Um, and my final uh, point, of, point of discussion, I guess, before that question, is this must give attitude in gamesmanship. I was given $5,000 for a year. How is it perceived at the end of the year if I don't spend any of those $5,000? Did I do a bad job? And um, if you're one of these people who's entrusted with this money, there's kind of this culture of giving. You're supposed to give it away. So like on the day before the, the test pilot ends, right, is it possible for someone to sneak in there with the lamest project idea ever of something fun they want to do, and then uh, the Wikipedia Foundation ends up spending its money in, in perhaps inappropriate ways. So that was some of my, I guess, criticism, I guess, and talking points about my experience with the project. Move on with the questions. So any questions? Okay. Yes, you said you funded um, four um, items for this. Um, how many ideas actually came through? Do you have statistics on that? that were not successful in getting flood funding? Actually, there were only four recommendations uh, which are available on Meta, yeah. and uh, we actually don't know any information about the number of projects that uh, came up with idea. So, uh, there might have been some other projects in discussion with uh, each of the flow funders, but if the flow funders thought that it's not uh, good to support this project, then it's out of uh, the public. Yes, yes. So it's not available on this. And I, I can personally speak to the fact that a lot were rejected because they didn't understand how they, they come they come to you with ideas, and essentially it's, I will code this, you slide some money my way. And those get to be rejected just because we, it's, it's my understanding, we cannot pay for human labor in any shape or Hi, I want to admit that I was a, a photo funder <laughs> I didn't, for a number of reasons, didn't get, um, get a project together. Um, but I think a lot of that was to do with the communication. I mean, there was a timing issue for, for my, from my side, which is why I, I, I didn't carry on. But um, I think a lot of that was also the, the communications, and it was, it was, to me, it was unclear when we started, when we stopped, how how, how much our grants were, where, you know, where, what are, how much influence we had, those kind of things. And I, I think obviously maybe I didn't read as much as I should have, or been as invested as I could be. But um, yeah, I just think maybe some of those things could be clearer, or maybe there is a centralized kind of. I know that there is a page, obviously, that you go to that, that it does that, but it doesn't give you all of those run-ons. Well, actually, the page is not in a very good shape. The flow funding uh, from page, yeah. but I think uh, it will improve uh, by the time. So, but uh, most of the main questions about the flow funding, uh, uh, about how a person can come up with the project and uh, uh, propose it to each of the flow funders, uh, how, what kind of project can be funded, and what is the range of uh, funding can be distributed, are actually explained in the page. Okay. Right. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Yeah, I've got a confession too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I participated in the flow funding model at the beginning. In fact, I was one of the people who was supposed to have gone through with it. Uh, my problem was with uh, the eligibility criteria. There were two projects that I thought I probably would have funded with the, with the model, and uh, after reading the eligibility criteria, I found that it wasn't eligible to be funded. Uh, do you want to just uh, talk a little bit about what eligibility criteria were set and um, what was the reasoning behind them? You mean about the eligibility criteria to fund projects? To fund the project, yes. Uh, well, uh, it's possible to uh, propose a project that is that does not worth more than two thousand dollars, but uh, 
there is no lower limit, but we recommend uh, that uh, it has to be more than five hundred dollars. Uh, the other thing is that the project must be aligned with the mission of those uh, foundation. And uh, usually, these uh, type of projects are uh, executed by smaller groups or individuals. So it's not uh, impossible to propose a project from a, from an NGO, from a local chapter, or anything else. But the project should be limited to two thousand dollars in scope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's clear, but uh, as you explained that criteria, that suits perfectly under the uh, grants making uh, program, which, oh. then, which then gives you this, uh, this ambiguity. Uh, do I oh, fund yes, it under uh, flow funding uh, model, or do I fund it under the grants making model? Yes, actually, I'm a member of the Grant Advisor Committee as well. So I think that uh, it helped me to be selected as one of the co-founders. And uh, the main thing is that uh, the grant-making process, the traditional grant-making process, is run by the foundation. While the full funding is uh, coordinated by a coordinator who coordinates a team of 10 co-founders across the world who actually are entrusted to make decisions about the projects to be funded. So uh, the main difference is that it's not the decision does not uh, uh, fall within the foundation, but it's uh, made by these people who act as co-founders, and uh, it doesn't make any change. But uh, the other thing is that uh, at the time that you have to wait until uh, the decision whether a product will be funded or not. Is usually much longer during the classical grant making process than during the full funding. I think that uh, all these four projects were actually uh, were approved uh, in less than two weeks. So there was a bit. While on the grant making process, this process can range from 30 to 90 days. So even the projects that are uh, the worth less than five thousand uh, dollars uh, need a time to be evaluated by the GEC and uh, to make a decision. So if you have, if you hurry up with your project, and if you think that uh, it fits well within uh, the criteria uh, that are set for the flow funding, you're welcome to propose your project for our recommendation. Okay. Any other question? So if there are no questions. I would like to thank you for coming. And, uh, Thank you.